Excited friends, it's Mitty Man coming back at you from Walker's Music. We get another word for the day. We give God praise and give Him glory for life, health, and strength. For it, whether it is, He taught us this morning with the finger of love, and our eyes flew wide open, rolled, rolled to our feet one for again. See a day that we've never seen before, and one that we never will see again. And for that, we give Him praise. We also want to give a shout out to the YouTube family from Baby Justice, all the way up to Big Papa JT, as well as Mama JT. Y'all know the routine. <laughs> Also to the guys, Kingdom Knowledge, Brother Hot and Cliff, uh, PP Drawings, End Time Harvest Gang, all of that make up that Brother JT, and uh, you know Papa JT, all of us that makes up that as the End Time Harvest. I just wanted to say, Doc, uh, saying that I, I did see a video man this morning early. I want to tell you something, Brother Midi Man was saved over two thousand years ago. On Calvary, when Jesus Christ stretched out his arm and yielded to the Romans to let him put him on that cross, Mitty Man was saved over 2,000 years ago. That's when he was saved. I don't know about anybody, and that's when everybody else was saved, whether they know it or not. But now, whether you, when you receive that, that, that that's, that's another account. But we were saved then. That's what, that's what Mitty Man looked at. Mitty Man was saved over 2,000 years ago. I'm glad you brought that up. We just want to say that uh, it's a lot of things that uh, is in the plate, is in the mix, and uh, Mitty Man want to say that it's a lot of it's a lot of confusion going on in our society, in our world, right in our own backyard, people. It's not no, you don't have to look very far for confusion these days. It's right there in your own household, right there in your own neck of the woods, and uh, that's because Satan is abound. Satan knows that his time is very short and he's causing all kinds of confusion and havoc just as much as he can be because he want to get everybody lost with him. He want to see, he, he want to hurt God. That's Satan. That's Satan's prime directive. He wants to hurt God. He knows he cannot be saved. And so therefore he wants to put God creation. He want to have God that put his own creation, which is you and I, into the lake of fire. And he knows that that would hurt God more than anything in the world is to see you or me go into the lake of fire. And Satan knows this, and this is how come that he is so rampant right now. And he's trying to get everybody to act a fool. And God knows some of us helping him out. Some of us are helping him out. I don't know, it's it just, I'm praying, and, and, and it's my prayer, I'm praying that people will wake up. And uh, I'm praying that they will see the light and see the goodness and the grace of God. And like I said, therefore we must as Christians, as believers ourselves, we must let our light shine and let, let, let in the hope that somebody will see the light and come out of darkness. That's 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 the best we can do. Uh we cannot beat them over the head, we can't make them do anything. Only God can save. But I still said people, we need to do our part is by letting our light shine. And in other words, we need to as, as a body believer, we need to just walk this walk. It's easy to talk it. God knows it's easy to talk it. But it's, 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 but it's more important that we walk. It's more important that we live the life that we profess. In other words, in we, the life that we confess. We, it's, uh, people don't want to so much hear a sermon as much as they want to see one. You know, everybody now, you know, is want to preach and teach and what not, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with that if it's the right motive. Let me tell you some people. Our works, you see, you are not working for salvation. Don't think now time because you're doing this and doing that and doing this that you're somehow working for salvation. No, salvation was paid for at Calvary. That was a done deal. You can't work for that. But what we work is work, we work for what we call Paul, Apostle Paul called that we all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Every believer. And that judgment seat, Paul, Paul referenced to that judgment seat as the Bema seat. See, Paul was well aware of those Olympics that they used to have. Even back in that time, they had them games. And they, he noticed how the, the strong one and the one that stayed in the race, how they would win. And that the Bema seat is where the rewards was given out. Now, any of you that knows anything about the Olympics or you read anything about Greek and Roman or history or Greek, or Greek history and whatnot, we know we have those uh, Olympic games up until this very day. Well, when Paul was mentioned about the judgment seat of Christ, he referenced to it as the Bema seat, sort of. 
he made in other words he made uh, an allegorical uh, 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 comparison using the beamer seat as as a reference point or uh, to the judgment seat of Christ well we all gonna stand and we're not gonna all receive the same reward because we all don't do the same work this is where your works come up at people that's what that's for but now let me tell you something guess what if your works is not with the, with the right motive they're gonna be burned up by Christ himself see your works got to be with the right motive See, it can't be nothing selfish, people. It can't be nothing that you trying to put light on yourself and trying to make yourself look good. That stuff going to be burned up. It's the wrong motive. So a lot of the stuff that we are doing, believe it or not, a lot of the stuff we are doing, we need to check ourselves because it's going to be burned up. It ain't going to be worth nothing at the judgment seat of Christ. But only that with the good and the sound motive is going to stand the test. That litmus test, of which is going to be a test by fire to see whether your works is pure gold. Only the pure works and only the work with a pure motive and conscience is going to stand before that judgment, people. So all this stuff a lot of us doing out here and we running to and fro trying to be seen a man and trying to be well thought of and trying to want people to uh, admit a man doing a uh, video just for folk to comment on. Well, if I'm doing it for that, just for that, that's all I'm going to get is just to comment and I ain't going to get nothing for Christ. Your motive's got to be right. Your motive's got to be right. So with that being said, I'm just so glad this morning. That uh, I uh, I'm I'm God give me another chance, and I'm hoping that to do something right that, that I didn't do right yesterday. Uh, I'm hoping that, that, that the Holy Spirit guide my feet into a land, into territory unknown, and that He keep me from falling. Like the book says, people, if God is not in what you're into, you need to get out of it. That's what middle man always say, and you know, Paul even to Peter. Peter said that this here world is going to catch on fire. Yes, he did. Peter said, hey, all this stuff that we, we love and so much is going to be burned up. People, get your cares out the world. Get your cares and put your hopes on things eternal. For those are the things that are for real. It's the unseen things that are for most for real, people. Not this stuff that you see every day. And I wouldn't gamble my soul or lose my soul on worrying about this worldly stuff. So with that being said, this is me, man, I'm going to say this one more time. Is as I always say, I don't care what you get or what you get into. If God is not in it, people, it's best that we get out of it. This is me, man, saying peace and goodbye.